Hi everyone, this is technique number five. So technique tags number five and six because I've done two for you here if you want to have a go at both methods. Now this is creating a fantastic distress background, really getting messy. You can see the state of my fingers. Uh, you can wear gloves if you wish. But we are going to be creating this really rustic distressed background. Now I'm going to be doing the technique using acrylic paints. But if you stay tuned towards the end, I am going to be showing another version where I'm using my Distress inks and sprays instead, in case you don't have acrylic paints to hand. Both ways give you amazing, beautiful results. And this is just building up your knowledge in the Mixed Media 10 Minute Techniques series. So let's jump straight in and get started. So in this technique today, we are going to be recreating a look with a resist, but not using resist paste. I've just brought this out to show you because I've got a few different resist pastes and sprays and such in my stash, but I want to show you a way you can get that look without needing to necessarily go out and buy craft items like this. So I'll just show you what this is like. So this is a bit like a balm. This is a very good one. I do love to use this one, but as I say, it is a little bit pricey, for the amount I use it because it is based for it is made for craft so it's uh, compatible with your papers and such however we can get a similar look with Vaseline or if you don't have the Vaseline brand petroleum jelly even if you've got something like a clear lip balm at home um, something that's very waxy oily that will also work now with this you are going to get a bit of a greasy finish afterwards so I would definitely be doing this and be aware of anything that you want to stamp over the top later. Okay, so firstly, we're going to use this. I'm going to be going on to my usual watercolour tag. If you haven't already seen the other videos where we've been building these up and creating, I'll just show you a library of tags for different techniques. You can go back and watch the introduction video to these sessions, um, plus all the other videos. They're in a playlist and I'll link that just here for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some paint. Now I'm going to be using paint to show you the technique because this is my preferred method. If you don't have acrylic paint, do not worry. You can do this technique with ink sprays. I've done it with a distress ink and a spray stain. Uh, I think actually it was an oxide spray. I will explain that at the end. There is a little bit of a caveat with that. Um, but as I say, I'll go over that at the end for you if you need that alternative. I've got my heat gun, my heat tool here, just to speed up the process for you. You can let everything air dry if you prefer not to get your heat tool out. Something I find quite important though is a soft brush. Okay, it does need to be uh, quite a soft brush. I'll explain why in a little while. And you need a dark and a light color of paint or ink. So I'm going with the darker one first. I'm going to cover my tag with this. I've got it and it's not too dark because I'm going to add a little more detail to this one. I'm actually going to do some stamping. You don't have to do the stamping. That is purely to add extra texture and detail. So as always, I'm going to shake my acrylic paint up just to make sure it hasn't separated. It's been standing a while. If anyone's uh, wanting to know about this one, it's Deco Art Americana and this one is called the French Grey Blue. So it's a nice soft, um, it's a blue, almost a grey, vice versa. So going to go on with my paint there a nice thick layer I'm actually not going to be using my soft brush to spread this one so you can use absolutely any brush that you have in your stash you don't need this layer to have the soft brush on it now I'm going over my, the edge of my tag onto my mat that's fine I've explained in previous videos what the mat on my desk is that wood grain look um, and it will all wipe clean with a little bit of water. So I'm not stressing about that. So I'm just going for full coverage here. If you want to leave some white areas, that is entirely up to you. So we need to cover this with colour. Again, you could even use a coloured cardstock if you prefer. If you have a cardstock that is the perfect colour for you, you can use a coloured cardstock rather than doing this painted or inked layer. Now, I think I've said it before, if your paper is curling and that's because you put medium just on one side, you can spritz the reverse with a little bit of water. And as you can see, that slowly just starts to flatten out itself. Um, allow that to soak in. So it's basically the fibres on one side are reacting differently to the fibres on another because they've had moisture put to them. Once you even that out, that will flatten out again and you can carry on heat drying that all off. 
Okay, so I've got my completely covered base there. I'm just going to add some stamping. This is completely optional. You can try out this technique without adding the stamping in, but I think the effect afterwards looks amazing. So I'm just going to use this really large text stamp. This is an old one that I've had in my stash for a while. I believe it was something like Stampers Anonymous. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I would have to look up the packaging. I kind of have it just floating around loose most of the time because I use it an awful lot. Uh, oh, it says on the back, Studio 490. Oh, it is Stampers Anonymous. There we go. So just going to stamp this twice. I'm not worried about this being perfect either. I'm just covering the background with some text there. And pop that to the side. Now I have stamped that in Versa Fine Claire. So just make sure this inked layer is also dry before we go on to the next stage. Okay, I think that is pretty much dry for the most part. Now on to adding that resist. So I'm going to use my finger. I find my finger absolutely the best tool. Um, if you don't mind getting your fingers mucky, you really should use them more often for inking, for painting, for applying glue. You know, they wash clean, so it's no worries as long as you don't have any reactions to any of the mediums. Obviously, test that out beforehand if you're not sure. So all I'm going to do is a little bit of Vaseline on my finger. I'm just going to run that down. Um, I'm going to go in lines down almost as if this was a piece of wood and um, sort of got peeling paint on it. And I don't want to actually cover too much with the Vaseline. I tend to overdo this quite a lot, but I do want it to be a decent thickness layer. So I'm just going there. I'm, you can see I'm sort of smudging my ink. That obviously wasn't completely dry, but that's fine. I'm not too worried. I'll put a big blob there and I'll put quite a large bit here. Okay, so you can't probably see exactly where I put that and you will need to experiment with the amount. Let's see if I can capture, there we go. So you can capture the light on there so you can see whereabouts I have put that. Now you could also go around the edge as well if you like sort of it to look as if the paint is peeling off the edges. That's entirely up to you. Now I tend to like to rub the Vaseline into my hands because, you know, it's good for you. It's moisturising. So now I've got that, I'm going to now apply my top layer and that is going to be a lighter colour. This is completely optional, just something that is going to contrast with the colour that you've already got down. Now you don't need to leave the uh, Vaseline to dry or anything like that, it's oil, uh, it's not going to dry, it's just going to sit there exactly as it is, like a barrier. Um, and that's exactly what Vaseline is, is it like a barrier cream? So I'm going to go over the top completely with this lighter colour, this is a beautiful very pale mint green it's um I can, do you know what i can't even see the color there to be able to show you because it's all worn off it's so old no sorry can't see the color but it's a beautiful one so then this is why we need a soft brush now I'm brushing in the same direction as i just applied the vaseline and i'm just going to do strokes like so you can see i've not used this paint in a little while it's getting really towards the end of its life because I've got some lumps and bumps in here. Now we're not pressing hard on this. I just, I don't want to interfere with the Vaseline that I've put down. All I want to do here is get a layer of that paint over the top. So the clumps that I've got there um, is my paint. That's not the Vaseline. I'm just taking the excess off of my brush just so I can try to get some of these lumps out. But to be honest, I most of the time I'm going for a distressed look and any texture like that is just a bonus. So now that's covered in the paint, I'm going to wipe my surface while I can, while it's still wet. And then I'm going to take my heat gun again and I'm going to whiz that over the top until the paint is dry. You will probably notice as you're drying it, you may get some separation of some of the paint areas, that's where your Vaseline is, so you know that that's doing its job and resisting. The paint won't necessarily always dry on the Vaseline either, but as long as the parts that you didn't put Vaseline on have dried, that's the important thing. Now I put an extremely thick layer of paint on here, so I know this is going to take a while to dry. I would probably usually rather than keep heating this up, because heating it up, does heat up the uh, petroleum jelly, the Vaseline as well, and that causes it to run a little. So I don't like to put too much heat, certainly not direct heat on this if I can help it. So I'm just again warming from a distance to speed this up for you. Um, but if I was doing this at home, 
on my in my own time I would just um, sit this aside go away and do something else for a little while okay let's take a look at this close up because we can see here at the top we've got a thinner layer of paint we've actually got the Vaseline where it's with the warmth of the heat gun it started to seep through the paint that's fine we're going to wipe that away and you can see some areas are dry some are not quite so dry but essentially that they are the areas so if we look here I know I put Vaseline here the paint hasn't really dried there because that oil that grease is kind of seeping into it so it's not going to dry but that's fine okay so now the magic we're going to take a piece of kitchen towel and I would always do this dry first and then apply a bit of water if you need to and we're just going to swipe down so wipe down and we're wiping away any paint that is sitting on the resist. So start off, as I say, start off dry. You might need a bit of pressure for this. I try not to use water until afterwards when I've got the majority of it off. So you can see there, it's fantastic resist coming through. Okay, so let's fold this over now. So I've got all my paint there, but that's the paint that didn't dry. Now I'm not going to spray this because I don't really want to get too much moisture on the stamping and the paint underneath. My water bottle is slowly running out so I'm just going to spritz my paper towel instead and I'm going to go back over and pull up any excess that's still on there. So I've pulled off all the paint. Now you can see where the paint was thinner it actually came off much easier. The beauty of mixed media is just like I'm always learning as well and that's something I've not discovered before I've not realized I can put the paint on a bit too thick so I know in future to do it a little bit thinner um, but also every result is different you will never ever achieve the same result twice so let's take a look at this a little bit closer so you can see here we have got that text coming through at the top here it's so beautiful it's so different and again it's really unpredictable so you can see the text that we've got coming through the bottom as well now one more thing i'm going to do just to make this even more vintage is i'm going to take some distress oxide this is in vintage photo i'm going to go round the edge now this is just finishing off my tag really so again completely optional you don't have to do this but i think if i want this to look like a piece of weathered wood there's something where the paint is so old it's peeling on it i always think a little bit of extra brown can't help so I've gone around the edge and then as long as this is all dry, you don't want to do this with your paint wet, I'm just going to drag my brush down a couple of times, not too much, and just work that in a little like so. So we've got a really nice distressed look. Now I did tell you about another way of doing this if you don't have acrylic paints and that is this way so this is obviously a much bolder look but i can quickly talk you through how i've done this one because it's the same method just different materials now first of all onto my piece of watercolor cardstock i did some um, blending of some distress ink so i used the peacock feathers distress ink i actually swiped it all the way down spritzed it with water a little bit like we did in video two and if that sounds interesting you've not seen it you can find video two just here so i completely covered the background in peacock feathers and allowed that to dry i did my stamping in my versifying claire again and then i went over with my petroleum jelly or my vaseline obviously i was a bit heavy-handed with it this time i did put it on quite a few areas so once I'd done that, I needed to go back over with something that wasn't a paint. So I thought, well, what have I got that will uh, colour this and actually go over the top? I thought my oxide sprays are perfect. So oxide sprays have pigment in them. So the dyes, so if you've got, for example, spray stains in any colour, the dye will soak into the paper. And that's fine if you're going for a much darker colour. But I didn't want to go for a colour that was really dark 
I certainly couldn't spray anything on that was going to really lighten the paper areas. So I went for this, this is Walnut Stain Oxide Spray because the pigments that are in this spray sit on top and they kind of give this cloudy look as well, which it's perfect. It's absolutely covered over everything. It's disguised everything underneath, but it is resistant to the Vaseline. So, um, so the Vaseline has totally resisted that. And then I, again, I've wiped it off afterwards and revealed the text and the color underneath just peeking through i haven't gone in with my brown here i would probably because this is much darker colors i think i'll go in with a black around the edge of this one with a darker color darken that up a little again this won't there's going to be a greasy film on the blue there left over from that vaseline so this isn't really going to um, go on that at all so just go over it and just make sure you clean your brush thoroughly just in case any of those oils did get into your brush so there i've got two very different techniques for you although the same technique two different finishes and you can try both of these or you can try either or depending on what you've got at home but i think just imagine that is a wooden door in a garden to a shed or something that's been painted years ago and the paint layers start coming off that sort of feel I just think it looks fantastic and you can use this on your MDF pieces, your chipboard, your ephemera or of course your background if you want to. So if you've just stumbled across this video and you're intrigued as to what we are doing here, you can see the introduction video for this entire series just up here. And I'm going to add the playlist here for you so all the videos so far can be found just here. And if you are new to my channel, I'd love it if you could subscribe as well just up here. Thank you everybody, take care, I'll see you again in a few days with another new technique.